Well, hello there and welcome to episode 57 of Little Big Knits. I feel like I always have to look down at my notes because I'm like, what episode was this again? <laughs> I hope this podcast finds you well. Hello, welcome to Little Big Knits. If you've been here before, hello again. And if you're new, thank you so much for checking it out, for coming back and hello. My name is Selma also known as Selma Knits on Instagram and Ravelry. I'm coming to you from Ottawa, Canada, where we have a really yucky day. So yucky that I've actually got a studio light over there to compensate for the darkness <laughs> everywhere. Um, we had some wonderful snow this week and now the temperature is above zero and it's gone to freezing rain and then probably turned to rain later. So it's just kind of gotten ugly. You never know what kind of weather you're going to get in December. We have had white crisps, Christmases as well as not white Christmases with no snow whatsoever and seven degrees. We can have anything in December. You're pretty much more guaranteed real winter weather in January and February. So anyway, coming to you from Ottawa, I hope this podcast finds you well and hello. Today, we've got, of course, knitting. But I'll also be sharing um, some of the vests. Well, actually, I think all of the vests that I've made. Um, it's a little pile, which I have right here, and you saw it in the thumbnail. <laughs> so I'll be sharing that with you a little later on, something that I thought I would do months and months ago. But now that I'm actually knitting a vest, which I'll share with you in the whip section of the podcast, I thought, perfect time to do a little vest parade. So here we are. Before we get into the knitting, just quickly reminder that we have two knit-alongs. Well, one's a knit-along, one is a make-along. We've got the Ranunculus Love Cal, which has been strong and people have been knitting ranunculuses like crazy. And we also have the LBK Christmas Mal, which is more of a make-along and it, it, any kind of making is acceptable in there. Both of these are coming to an end on December 25th. So at some point on at the, at the end of the day on the 25th, my time here in Ottawa or on early on the 26th, I'll close those threads and um, that'll mark the end of those alongs. And before I forget, we also in the Little Big Knits group, those two uh, make alongs, knit alongs are actually being hosted in our Ravelry group um, called Little Big Knits but also as a hashtag for each of those knit-alongs on Instagram. So people have been sharing things there as well. And it's been great to see. My goodness, the world is full of beautiful ranunculus sweaters. That's for sure. Really, really nice. And lots of wonderful Christmas making. I have to say I have favorited some new, new things, new items that people have made. I really wanna make one of those Christmas gnomes. I don't think this is the year, but I'm thinking of setting a goal and I also want to make little Christmas sweaters as like as a garland um, and I think I'm going to set a goal to somehow get on that over the year of 2022. Let's see. In our Little Big Knits group we also have a thread for coupon codes. So um, if you're a maker whether it's a dyer or a stitch marker maker or designer and you want to offer a coupon code there is a coupon code thread, so feel free to check that out, people. Um, often what happens is that people also tell me, um, and I mention it on the podcast. So we have a coupon code for a designer who designs socks. I think she has six or seven patterns of socks, and they are um, anywhere from fingering to DK weight, which is great. And she's also gifted me a couple of patterns, so thank you very much. Her name is Noha Abu Shenaf. Uh, also known as Noha Farouk on, uh, on Ravelry. And she has offered us a, a coupon code for Selma50 for a, I'm assuming actually 50% discount on her sock patterns. I'll have to check that completely and put it down here, but it's Selma50. So if you're interested in looking for some um, lovely and simple sock patterns, you can check out her store. And all of that information will also be down below in, in here on YouTube, that's the platform I'm on, um, in the show notes. All right, 
let's get on with the knitting, shall we? Sounds good. Mm. Just before, it's Christmas mug time, and my friend Kate of the Hawthorne Cottage Craft Podcast had given me this mug last year. It was last year, I believe, right? Um, and I just love it. I don't know who the maker is. It's somebody in Ireland, but it's just a very stylized Christmas mug, and I really very much like it. So I am drinking out of my advent calendar, which is a tea advent this year. I didn't do a knitting one. This one is um, a lemon ginger tea, a green tea that I'm drinking right now. This is a new to me company that I found on Amazon, to be honest. I was looking for, I was looking for advent calendars. I wanted to do a puka advent calendar, but they were out of that. And I saw this one by a company called Bahdam, B-A-H-D-A-M. It's just four compartments. So I sneak in every day and just put my eyes closed and pick out a bag of tea. Um, but I've really, really been enjoying their teas a lot. Um, their chais in particular are delicious. They are directly from India. There are a lot of teas with turmeric. Um, there are herbal teas or herbal teas of all kinds. I had one the other day that was a hibiscus rose tea that was really, really interesting. Um, and so I will, I think, be enjoying their teas again in the future. Really have been enjoying drinking a different tea every day from them. Really great. Right, so let's talk about knitting. So the first thing I have to share with you is a finished object that I have made recently since the last podcast because a friend mentioned that she liked my fingerless mitts and I thought, okay, well, that's what you're getting for Christmas. <laughs> um, I had made the wood sorrel um, mitts, I'm not quite sure what the, they're called, mitts by Melissa Shishwari. And I'd made them for myself. I made them, I made them for myself twice. I made a pair, a couple of other pairs for other people. And um, my friend was commenting on the ones I had. And so I thought, well, I'm gonna make some. So I got myself, some um, Fiber Company Amble, which is a new sock, newish sock yarn that they have. So this is the Wood Sorel, really, really easy, lovely uh, linen stitch pattern that just whips up. Um, and I, I've really enjoyed this pattern. The ones that I wear primarily, I've worn them a lot and they're starting to get a tiny bit grungy. So I might end up making myself a pair as well out of this yarn. The Fiber Company uh, Amble is a, I believe it's a wool, alpaca and recycled nylon blend. Um, and it's sort of an eco-treated wool. And although I had heard about it here and there, had been thinking about it, I was watching Alex Collins, who's got the Alex Collins podcast, and she was talking about it. And then I remembered that they had this yarn at a local um, fabric shop where they also carry yarn called Fabrications, and it's actually a walking distance from my house. So I walked over, they had this color, which was perfect for my friend, and uh, I got it. And I have to say, it's absolutely beautiful yarn. It can be a sock yarn, it's got the nylon in it, but it's very wooly and very warm. Um, so I think it would be a beautiful uh, yarn for other accessories and even, dare I say, a sweater. Uh, very, very beautiful yarn. So I think I still have half a ball yet left. I have to decide whether I will make myself a pair of socks with it to see how they wear, or I was thinking about making a headband for my friend. Um, she doesn't like hats very much, and and uh, so I thought I might make a headband for her. Um, we'll see, but it's very lovely yarn. Thank you, Alex, for enabling me to get this. I do think I would like to get some more of it, but we'll hold off on that for a while. But very, very nice. So that's my first FO. The other FO I have for you, I will show you here in a picture, or I can't remember which side it'll be on. Um, I showed you last time these tubes that I had had cranked by Homebody Knits, who are um, a Jess and Ally here in Ottawa, actually about a kilometer away from me. And uh, they have a tube cranking service, and they had cranked these. Um, tubes for me that were out of mustache yarns and I showed this to you last time I think last time I had 
the cuffs. Can't remember if I had put the toes on. I don't think I put the toes or the heels on. So I managed to do that. And um, these have already given, been given to my friend. Went to Toronto last weekend for the one of a kind show and um, met up with my friend Dana and they were given to her. So, and apparently they fit, which is great because she has bigger feet than me. So I had to figure out mm, how much bigger do I need to make them and where do I place the heel? But um, that was great. Uh, I hadn't done a cut in heel in a while. So my first one <laughs> was a little funny and I realized that I wasn't really following the instructions. And then I went back to the Georgia socks that I had knit a while back as a test knit for uh, Tracy Miller of the Grocery Girls. And that's where I had learned how to do a cut in heel. So I went back to the, uh, to the pattern and looked at, oh yeah, that's how I was supposed to do it. So the second one was a lot easier and a lot less finicky and that worked out really well. So I still have the other tube with this yarn and then I have two other sock tubes that have been given to me uh, or one that I had cranked by Homebody Knits and then another one that, that was given to me by my friend Sue. So they will eventually be becoming socks as well. And that's really all the uh, finished objects I have for you today. So let's look at whips. So what have I been working on in the last, I think four weeks? Um, you will recall that I had been working on socks for my friend Paul. I probably could have put this in a sock walker and made it a little bit nicer looking, but out of this yarn, which is the Regia uh, Tweed four ply. Now, I got a lot of things to tell you about this. First of all, I had told you that the yarn was discontinued. I swore I had seen on Ravelry that it was discontinued, but then a few people contacted me and said, no, 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 you can find Regia 4 ply. A couple of other people were from Germany and a couple from the States. And one told me that you could buy Regia yarn on hot yarns in the United States. Um, and I think there were a couple of other places in Europe and, um, I immediately, the first person who contacted me told me about hot yarns in the States and I went on their website and went a little crazy. I'll show that to you a little later. Um, so this, this yarn is still available, which made me very, very happy and it's very reasonably priced. So I got myself four sock quantities of that, but they won't all be for me. So um, I got to the end of the first sock and you'll remember perhaps if you were watching last time that I was actually sort of I had before finishing the first sock I had started the second sock because I needed a quick thing to bring with me and I, I had sort of thought that I might be at the toe or close to the toe and I didn't have the time to figure that out so I had started the second sock I'm getting further down on it I kind of slowed down on these because I figured I have something else that's a little bit more urgent and I thought I've got time but I was knitting <laughs> These, which are a 72 stitch sock um, but somehow I got to the toe I started doing the toe decreases and the numbers on one side of the toe and the other side of the toe decreases weren't working out and I was like that's very bizarre what's happening there are clearly less less stitches on the bottom than the right did I decrease weirdly no and then I realized oh I know what I did I had decreased in the gusset to have 36 stitches on the top because that wasn't touched but 32 stitches on the bottom so that it would be more like a 64 stitch sock because that's what I'm used to knitting and so when I got to the toe and also Alejandro had tried the sock on because he's got the same pair, size feet as my friend does and they were really tight and I was thinking why are they that tight there we go so I had to pull back that sock and I'm working on that. I finished what was supposed to be the second sock and now I'm reworking the first sock and I could have finished it very quickly but I decided to hold off on these. So this is my own uh, pattern. Um, I had told you last time that this stitch pattern that I created which is sort of a simple sort of cabled rib, I've put it in my project notes. So if you go to my project page you'll see a project pattern called tweed for P <laughs> and uh, I've put the stitch count there the stitch sort of like the the, the pattern there um, I may put it up as a free pattern at some point as just a stitch pattern um, but it's been a really lovely easy pattern I've really enjoyed it 
and I did a, a heel flap and I'm going down towards the toe. So these will get done before Christmas, but I had to cast on another project. And it's a bit of a deja vu project. You may recall that I made this oatmeal ranunculus that I adore very much. Um, although I do wish that I'd made it a tiny bit longer. Um, I think this has shrunk a tiny bit or somehow bloomed a bit. Um, but I made this out of Americo Brisa. Americo no longer has an online presence anymore. She stopped her store. Um, but this is a alpaca bamboo blend. I think it's like 54% alpaca and the rest bamboo. And it's a sort of chainette kind of yarn. And I decided at the last hour, almost it felt like, that do you remember I was knitting the Calera shawl for my sister-in-law? And then I thought, okay, it's fine that I'm knitting this for my sister-in-law, but my mother-in-law just turned 80. I really should be making her something. And I thought, I'm gonna make her a ranunculus exactly like mine because this would look lovely on her. And because this yarn sort of, it sort of comes together, my mother-in-law is quite petite. I thought this will look great on her. The color is perfect for her. So I've decided that I'm gonna put the calera aside. We may be going in March. Um, we've had to, we were gonna go for Christmas, but we've had to postpone that for health reasons here in the house. Um, my son is going at Christmas time because he really wanted to go and he won't be able to go in March because he's in first year university and it's pretty intense. So we said, you go for Christmas and, and, and if possible, we're gonna go in March. So I thought I can bring the Calera shawl, finish it, bring it to my sister-in-law in March, but it really would be nice to send my mother-in-law a sweater. So I have finished the body. Oh boy, there are needles everywhere. I have finished the body of the ranunculus and I'm actually just, just starting the sleeves. And here it is. Um, and I'm making it the exact same way as the other one. The only difference was that the pattern is usually knit in six millimeter needles, which I always use. I usually make the neckline in 5.5 millimeter needles, but this time I decided to make it with five millimeter needles just because my, my mother-in-law is very petite and I, I didn't want it. Mine has stretched a little bit and it's a little bit wider and I didn't want this to be too wide for her. So a joy to knit as always, ranunculus number six, or also known as the deja vu ranunculus. And, um, it's going swimmingly. Um, it was so fast. I think I started it last Friday. So in a week I finished the body and I hope that in a couple of nights I'll finish the sleeves. So that is going really, really well. There should be just enough for the sleeves. <coughs> Excuse me. And it is being housed in this wonderful bag from Antler and Acorn that I got myself for Christmas last year. Um, I just love this Harris tweed bag. Super duper beautiful and perfect for the ranunculus. So that's whip number two. I forgot to mention to you actually that I finished Alejandro's sweater. I had posted it on Instagram. Um, I had, I re-knit the cuffs. I think I showed this to you last time, his gray sweater, and I could have brought it down, although he's probably wearing it because he hasn't taken it off since I fixed it. Um, but I re-knit the, the ribbing along the cuffs and the bottom of the sweater because they had frayed. And what I did was in the last couple of rows, I added some um, sock reinforcement thread. And somebody asked last time, what is that? And essentially it's a very thin, version of, it's by Regia, I believe, or Sakemeyer, um, and it's a very thin yarn that's essentially a wool nylon blend, and you can add it to sock yarn in places where the sock is going to fray or, or, or wear, such as the heel or the bottom of the foot, um, but you can also use it for darning. So I added that to the last rows of the, the, the cuffs as well as the ribbing at the bottom of the sweater and uh, cast off 
and I re-knit the ribbings completely, not just the last rows, just because I I couldn't remember exactly what needle size I had used. I hadn't put it in my project page. I usually do it, but I'm not always that great at that. And so I thought, I'll just re-knit them. And um, I ended up making the ribbing um, in both the cuffs and the bottom of the sweater a little longer, um, just by two, three rows. Uh, but because it's quite thick yarn, you know, that probably constituted at least a centimeter. And yeah, he's been wearing the sweater again. And so far, that's great. So I didn't share that with you. I was just thinking, what else had I showed you last time? But I had not showed this to you. You may recall that <clears throat> I had gotten some wonderful um, Baram U Winterburn DK yarn in Fredericton when I was there at the very beginning of November. And this is a, a British, 100% British yarn uh, spun and dyed in Yorkshire. It's a blend of 50% Blueface Leicester and 25% Ecru Massam and 25% Dark Brown Massam. So it's a yarn that has a lot of depth. And I had gotten this color, which is called Wesley Bob. I have no idea what a Wesley Bob is, but it seems to be red, possibly. Um, I had gotten four skeins of this, originally thinking that I would make myself a red ranunculus, then realizing it was more wooly than I really wanted. So I have since started a vest. <clears throat> there is a free pattern called the Helga sweater. That is a knitty pattern um, and it's online and it's free. The only thing about it is I haven't been able to find a button on the page so that you can actually download it. So I have been looking up the stitch patterns and everything on the internet, which is a little bit annoying. Um, maybe there's a way to do it and I just haven't figured out. But the Helga sweater, I had seen a someone knit a vest out of it. So they simply didn't add the sleeves and I had really, really liked that. And so that is what I am doing. And I am almost at the division for the front and the back. I've got maybe another inch to go, maybe an inch and a half, something like that. And so it's got this kind of uh, trellis cable in the middle and then it's got this um, kind of bobbly pattern on the side. In the original pattern, it has a double seed, seed stitch and I decided to do a single seed stitch on here. And it's the same in the front and the back. It's meant to be quite a cropped sweater and I decided that I'm gonna make mine a little longer. Um, I think they suggested 10 inches. And I'm probably gonna do mine to about 12 or 13, a little bit longer, um, so that it sits kind of like at the top pants or skirts. Um, and I'm hoping to finish this before Christmas so that I can wear it with this white blouse as a, you know, as my Christmas sweater, so to speak. But it's going extremely well. I'm knitting it on four millimeter needles. And it's, it's great. It's a little bit slow because there is the cabling happening pretty much every row. It, the original pattern is knit in pieces and I decided to make mine in the round. Uh, so yeah, I'm pretty sure it was in the pieces. Yes, it is. And then I'll figure out what I need to do for the finishing of the arms. Um, but I think I'll, I know, I think she had put a, an I cord on there I may do an I cord or I may do like just a short ribbing we'll see so that is what I am working on that and the ranunculus are both taking up a lot of my energy because I want them both finished um, my son leaves for Uruguay on the 22nd so the sweater needs to be completely ready to go on the 22nd but we are around I think what are we the 10th or the 11th today and so I figure that um, it's totally doable. I'll finish the ranunculus in the next three, four days and, and that'll be done. So I could even maybe finish the Calera for Christmas as well if I really put my mind to it, but I do really want to finish the red vest for myself. So that is really what I've been working on. A couple of other things I wanted to share with you. First of all, um, 
I am going to be releasing a pattern. It's a pattern for a skirt. It's actually more of a recipe. And I do, um, it's being tested at the moment and a lovely, lovely friend has sort of tech edited it for me. And so I'm hoping to get that finalized and publish it probably between Christmas and New Year's. Um, and so I'll share that with you uh, when it is published. I hope to do the same thing that I did with the Westboro hat last year, which was donate um, the full proceeds for the first <clears throat> week or so of the sales of the pattern to a charity. So I'll tell you more about that um, when the pattern is published. And I'm thinking about having a knit along for it because I think that would be really fun. Um, I will also be knitting myself one this winter. I'll, I'll show you because I have this skirt that I've made um, multiple times and uh, I'll, I'll show you the versions when I've um, published the pattern and I'm going to start myself another version as well. So um, that's coming and I'm, I'm really excited about that and hopefully uh, people will be interested in knitting a skirt. Um, I think we think a lot about knitting garments such as vests and sweaters and accessories of all kinds and so forth. Um, skirts are less popular, but I have to say, I love my knitted skirts and they're very warm. So yeah, so I'll tell you more about that. And the other little thing I wanted to share with you was this skein of yarn, which is a little messy, I'm afraid. Um, this skein of yarn is a natural dye experiment of mine. Um, it is, I'm pretty sure this is Malabrigo Rios in the natural colorway that I had gotten in, in Montevideo when I was there at one point. And I had first dyed this with avocado. And I'll put in a picture here. It turned into this rather nondescript, non pale, yellowy beige that I thought, well, what am I going to do with that? So it sat and nothing happened to it. And then earlier this fall, my friend brought me some black walnuts. And black walnuts are a great, um, give a great brown color. You have to soak the walnuts in water for a while and, and sort of let them sit and emit. And then you boil it and, and, it, and then you put your cloth or your yarn in it and it has natural tannins so you don't really need to mordant it, my understanding is so we got the black walnuts put them in a bucket let them sit for about a week they were in the house and I said to Alejandro maybe we should put them outside and we'll just close the bucket so we did that um, and then a few days later we realized that the bucket had been opened when we looked in and all the walnuts were gone However, because they are a big favorite among squirrels. So we took the, it in and I actually thought, well, I'll bring out that sort of nondescript avocado dye experiment and I'll put that in the walnut water. So I did, but because the walnuts had not sat in it long enough, the color that it gave off was a sort of a light, sort of a beige but a bit of a darker beige but it still wasn't anything that I thought was very exciting. So I remembered that I had some natural dyes left from a natural dye experiment last year when my friend had given me sort of a kit and I brought up the matter. Some of them have kind of gone bad and they're no good anymore but the matter still seemed to be okay and I thought I'll add a little bit of matter to the water and see what happens and I ended up with this beautiful skein of terracotta yarn. So this has been dyed with avocado, black walnuts, and matter. <laughs> and now I have to figure out what to make with this. But this has been uh, really fun actually to see the different things and, and to fail and to see why I failed. I don't know what to do about avocado. I've never really, I don't know that I would be able to get some of the more, the deeper colors. I might give it a try again. Um, we've actually been saving onion skins and I'm, I'm hoping to try that this winter. They're all in the freezer in a baggie. Um, so I'm hoping to try uh, dyeing with onion skins and seeing what happens with that. So that was another fun little experiment. So let's go on to the vest parade portion of this podcast. 
I'm wearing a vest. Um, and this is a vest that you've seen before if you've been here for a while. And if you know me in real life, you know that I wear this vest a lot. This is definitely my favorite vest. I could wear this every single day. I love this vest. <laughs> I made this um, vest about three, four years ago. Uh, I think it was through, I don't know. With COVID, I have to say my sense of time is completely gone. Um, but I made it before Rhinebeck and um, I'll put the year down here. I'll figure it out. And this is actually meant to be a poncho. Um, it's meant to be knit in worsted weight yarn. It's a pattern called the Camden Hills Poncho by Elizabeth Smith. <clears throat> and it's supposed to be knit in worsted weight yarn. But I knit it in a sport weight yarn, which was from Persimmon Tree Farms. Uh, it's a 100% alpaca yarn that I got at Rhinebeck. And I have used this for the, this yarn for this vest as well as for my, uh, was it called the more Dew cardigan? No, something Dew cardigan that I made last year. Um, and I, the Persimmon Tree Farms mostly do very bright, um, almost garish uh, colors. They do very bright colors in mohairs and all kinds of things. But then they have this one little section of natural alpaca and that's from that and i i cannot speak more highly of this alpaca this has kept its shape absolutely beautifully it has pilled minimally um and i've worn this a lot the only thing that has happened is I'm starting to realize that where the separation happens here, that the yarn is starting to thin and I probably have to buy some of that. Um, either, I think I have a little ball left of it, either take that out and do some darning along the bottom to reinforce it before it really does break or get some reinforcement yarn and, and do that under there. So that's something that I should do this winter. But this is a two-tone vest. I made it two-tone because I didn't have enough yarns of the, of the boat of the two and then there's a lace detail here at the bottom. So this was a poncho that I turned into a vest. Um, you know, I didn't change any of the other details, followed it. It's got a nice, very simple little detail here. It's got garter along the, the edging and it's just such a cozy, comfortable piece uh, that I really, really like. It's got enough ease that you know, as my body changes, because it certainly has, um, it kind of goes with me and it's just been really great. So that's vest number one. Vest number two is the sweater call or vest called Heady by Sarah Hatton. And it was from a book, but I could not locate the book. I'm a little perplexed by that because it's usually in the same spot where all my knitting books are but I've clearly put it somewhere else. So um, yeah, I really, really enjoyed this pattern at also. This is um, a fingering weight vest, also round neck, that is um, meant to be knit out of Rowan Finest, I believe. I use Estelle Socket To Me, um, which is a sock yarn, uh, a wool nylon blend, and this is knit bottom up. So, <clears throat> Here it is. This is a snugger vest um, and it's got this cabling detail up here that is very lovely and I either have worn this with a white blouse or uh, a light grey blouse that I have and yeah just a nice sort of standard vest. Nothing else to say about this. The one thing I have to say is that when I make a vest and even a sweater Usually, I'm very conscious of the armhole, um, and I try to make armholes that are going to suit my my structure, um, rather than just following the pattern. Because often, um, what can happen is that their armholes can end up being larger or smaller. So I try to modify to make it the length that suits me, so that it sits nicely under, you know, at the armpit essentially, <clears throat> and has a nice fit here. So this is vest number two, the Heady by Sarah Hatton. I don't know that the pattern is one that you can buy um, 
on Ravelry. I think it was part of this book and I'm afraid I don't have it with me, but you can look it up and you'll find it for sure. So that's best number three. All right, sorry, that was best number two. Now I'm on to best number three. And this is the only V-neck vest that I have. It is the Grandfather Vest by uh, Veronique Avery. And I made this out of a yarn that I had gotten from the discount section. It's a Diamond Luxury Collection Merino Looks, and I think it's a Merino Alpaca Mohair Blend. I bought it in this blue, and I also bought it in white. I loved working with it, but it doesn't wear very well. Um, it, it's quite a pilly, fuzzy experience, but this is a very basic V-neck vest with two buttons, and I use these vintage buttons that I had found, and it's very basic. I have to say, this is probably my least favorite vest in a way. Um, I think there's something that's a little bit that doesn't quite I don't think that the v-neck is the best cut for me for whatever reason I think I prefer round necks a little bit more but I have definitely worn this um, with you know a blouse and a pair of pants and it's a worsted weight pattern um, and yeah it's a nice basic vest pattern so this is vest number three and again I was careful about this area. I think that's probably one of the most important things when it comes to vests, because you don't, unless it's really meant to be sort of a vest that has a, a large opening here, that can just really not work with the proportions of a person, in my opinion. And and I do find that sometimes with patterns, the, you know, the expectations of what can happen as a size goes up can be a little bit different. So, So that's vest number three. All right, number four. Number four and number five are both the Nuuk, uh, N-U-U-K, which appeared in line in number one, I believe, and it's a pattern by Yonna Hietala. It's a Finnish designer, and um, it's meant to be, it's, well, I'm calling it a vest, although it's really a short sleeve sweater, but I knit this to be a layering piece, and that's what I consider vests to be, is kind of like a layering piece, and um, so this is actually the second one I made. I probably should have showed you the first one, but this was next on the pile. I picked it up and here you go. And I was just told that it's a lovely spring color. So it is a lovely spring color. This is the uh, Whistle Bear Yeebering DK. I, th uh, yeah, I think it's called Yeebing or the Yeebering Bell DK. Um, I do not remember what the color was. Is it something like spring asparagus or I can't remember. Um, but this is a lighter version than the other one, which is also made out of whistle bear, and you'll see in the moment. And this is one that I find I really love this yarn. It's got mohair in it. What can I tell you? It's 80% mohair and 20% um, what do you call it? Wensleydale. And it's a bit of a lighter, it's a lighter color and it's more transparent because the nuke. Let me just show you the other nuke. The nuke is just supposed to be plain. And I added a stitch pattern to this one. So it's got the stitch pattern. But because it's quite light, it's very, very transparent. And I feel like I can't wear just anything underneath it. Um, but it's a nice light layering piece. I do definitely wear it. It's a lovely, lovely color. And it's very nice. Oh, I've got a Yoda here who is going to be very excited about all the sweaters and wanting to need them. So, so yeah, so this is the Nuke and it's lovely. And I think you can take just about any, hey, you're making an appearance. You can take just about any sweater, really, make it short sleeve and it turns into a vest. And I think that that's just wonderful. Um, and that's what I'm doing with the uh, Helga that I'm knitting currently. I'm taking a sweater and turning it into a vest. So you don't necessarily need to have vest patterns. Um, in I think this one is a raglan construction. So you literally just don't knit the sleeve. It's very, very simple. So yeah, so this is the Nuke. 
and I'll be back with the other nuke. Here I am. <laughs> I'm not good at the snapping thing, so I didn't bother. I, didn't, I couldn't figure it out in my head, so I just thought it's just going to be the way it is. So this is the first nuke that I made. Again, the pattern by Yonna Hietala from line number one. Um, also knit out of Whistleberry Yeevering, but this is the Aran weight. And I think this was called Chainmail. And and it's it's the same type of thing where I just... It's a short sleeve sweater, the the um, this pattern, the nuke. And I made it out of the Aran weight, same yarn, 80% mohair and 20% Wensleydale. When I first finished this, I was a little bit upset because I had not realized that all of this was happening while I was knitting it. And I was not sure how I felt about this pooling that was happening on this sweater. But I have to say that I have worn this a lot. It's lovely, it's warm, of course, it's mohair, so it's going to be warm. Um, and I've gotten used to that and it doesn't bother me anymore. But at first I was really a little perturbed by it. Um, this has also become a little bit of a layering piece for me when I go hiking, especially in the fall when it was colder. It was a really nice thing to wear. I would wear a thin merino um, layer under this and then this and uh, and a jacket and often the jacket came off but this could stay on because it's a it's an airy piece um you know it is a little bit see-through uh but not as much as the other one and this one stayed true to so my storage was full and the camera just shut down there for a second but i think i was telling you that this sweater has sort of tra stayed true to the original pattern um was knit in stocking knit stocking stitch and I just followed the pattern. So yeah, this is a great vest, vest number one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> All right, back with two more. Vest number six, I believe. I'm losing track here. Um, and this was the first vest that I ever made. This is the, uh, it was a top down free version of the Let Lopi vest. Um, that you can find online and I knit this out of some leftover I had this leftover purple cascade yarn that I bought for another sweater and I found bits and bobs of um, I think these are mostly um, Galway Heather yarns that I had in my stash and I made this vest this is a good 10 years old I believe probably about 10 years old um, and it was the first vest I made it was also my first color work and I have worn this a lot. It actually, I mean, I wash it by hand, but it feels like it has felted a little bit over time somehow. And uh, it's sort of gotten a little bit more dense in its fabric, it seems to me. But I still wear this a lot. Um, it's, it's fun, it's bright, and it's warm. And I just love vests. It's a great way to stay warm. And it's just about that length and there you go. So um, this I think is based originally on a lopi sweater that is knit from the bottom up and uh, I happened to come upon this free version where you're essentially just given the chart and then you kind of figure out the rest. I think that's the way it went um, and I remember that I needed to add on a little bit of extra because it wasn't quite enough for me. I think I might have had a slightly smaller gauge than the original one. But I do like my vests, I must say. And there comes Yoda again. You're seeing a lot of Yoda. I think you may see a lot more of Yoda in the winter because she really doesn't like going outside in the winter. And she gets a little grumpy and uh, she whines a lot more and you see her a lot more. And um, so she is, I gotta show this to you. Oops, I just created a mess. She's sleeping on my last vest. What am I going to do? <laughs> Yoda. Oh. All right, well, I'm just gonna have to take it out from under her and I'll give her this one instead. So back in a flash again and the last vest of the parade she's sitting down but I put my my other vest there so if she wants to lie on it she can 
So this is another one that is a, a, quite a modification. This is based on the Edith Cardigan by Pam Allen. And I, and it's supposed to be a cardigan. It's supposed to be a, I think it's an Aran weight cardigan. And I used a sport weight or light DK, somewhere in that range, yarn by Americo, who, um, like the yarn that I'm using from a Renunculus, this is another yarn from Americo, which is a 100% um, Surrey alpaca, and it's no longer, she's no longer uh, carrying these yarns. Um, but when she was closing, she was having a sale, and I bought a quantity of this. And what I did was I transformed the Edith cardigan into the Edith vest. Um, with a smaller gauge, I made a larger size. Well, I think it has a little bit less ease. And this is very different from the other vests in the sense that it's open. It doesn't have any buttons on it to close it. It's just a long piece um, that you would wear. And I usually wear it with a dark blouse. And it's quite long. It goes down to um, just above my knees. Um, and so I usually wear this with like a dark black skirt or black pants with a darker blouse as well and this and it's just a lovely piece it has short rows here for the shaping and uh, I really wanted to make the Edith cardigan but then I decided to turn it into a vest I may make the cardigan one day um, but uh, at this point I have a vest instead and, uh, you know, I could have made it shorter. And again, it's just a nice piece to give some warmth, but not as much warmth as a cardigan that would cover your arms. And um, this one, because it's long, it's, it's a bit more of a statement than the other ones are. So it's not one that I put on every day, but I have a, um, uh, a black silk blouse that I will wear it with that I quite like and, and actually I've never worn it with a white blouse but it looks nice with this as well so yeah so that is the last of my vests um, and I don't know what else to tell you about this one except that I like it and there are all kinds of different vests so I've only got one v-neck vest um, most of my vests are round necks and they're closed um, this is the only open one. This has a lovely feature of having this um, sort of broken, I think, fisherman's rib along the edge here. And um, it's just really lovely. And the nice thing about Vest, although this one, because it's long, it probably used up what would normally be for a sweater, a closed sweater quantity. Vests use up less yarn than a sweater. So sometimes maybe you didn't buy quite enough yarn for a sweater and you can always convert it into a short sleeve or a vest and, and that works great and I really enjoy them as layering pieces. I've actually been wanting to knit under another vest because I hadn't, I think this was the last vest that I made and probably about two years ago. I had bought some yarn to make a white one but I hadn't cast that on yet. I also have a uh, quantity, a vest quantity that I bought specifically to make a vest out of Rowan um, Tweed DK in Celadon. Um, and maybe those will get cast on this year. I really should commit to that. And then of course, I'll have the red vest, which I'll wear beyond Christmas as well, but I am hoping to get it ready for Christmas. So that was the vest parade. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And uh, there you go. I've been wanting to do that for a while. I think the next one will be a skirt parade. And then, aside from that, I'll just show you a few little acquisitions. All right. In terms of acquisitions, I already mentioned to you that I went a little hog wild, crazy, um, and got some of this uh, Regia Tweed DK. So this is a gray that's got lovely speckles in it. I got this cream, which I really, really like. This is definitely becoming a pair of socks for me. And then I also got some of this blue, which is beautiful. And it's got nice speckles in it or, or tweed bits, neps. And then this really dark charcoal gray, which is gorgeous. So, um, one of these is definitely going to become a prize for the podcast. 
but I'm really looking forward to knitting myself a pair of socks out of tweed as well. My friend Crystal very kindly donated this yarn, which is this lovely, lovely blush pink. And she said, you know, you can make a sweater for yourself or you can keep it for the podcast. And I think I'm going to keep it for the podcast. This is a three skeins of home, uh, which is by the Barrett Wool Company. And this is a 100% American wool and it's in the colorway straw flower. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So I'll be keeping this for a prize for the podcast. Thank you, Crystal. Really, really like it. Lovely. And I was just thrilled to finally touch this yarn, actually, which has got a really, I think this would have amazing stitch definition because it feels like a really robust yarn. Very, very nice. And then the last thing I wanted to share with you was my aunt had sent me a package from Finland with um, all of this year's magazines by Novita. Novita is a Finnish yarn company. Um, this is the winter one. And there was the spring one, the fall one, and the summer one. And I have been enjoying looking through these. So Novita, as I said, is a Finnish wool company. It's probably the largest wool company in Finland. Um, they do all kinds of yarn. You've probably heard of some of their yarns. We uh, have some of their yarns here at Wabi Sabi. And they put out patterns as well. Um, if you know of Sari Nordland, um, who is the designer behind many, many wonderful patterns, um, the poet being a very, very well-known one, she used to design for Novita. And they put out these magazines every year. Um, so this was the summer one. I'll just bring out the winter one. So they just have lots and lots of different kinds of, uh, different kinds of patterns, everything from women's, men's, children's, sweaters, accessories, and so forth. And uh, speaking of vests, there is one right there. So I have been enjoying looking through these magazines as well, and it, they have some really, really interesting things too. So thank you for that. And uh, yeah, so that is really the things that have come into my life in the last month or so. Which brings us to the end of all the yarny goodness of this podcast. Um, I, I feel like uh, I'm not sure if I said everything I needed to say about the Vest Parade, but if you do have any questions, feel free to put them down below and I'll answer them next time. Um, but yeah, I do enjoy my vests. So yes, this brings us to the end of the podcast. Um, some of the footage that you'll see will be from the Christmas market. I went to the uh, to Lansdowne yesterday evening and went to the Christmas market as well as the Pottery Guild sale, which they have every year. And I love going because I do love, I do love pottery. And I used to make pottery as well. Usually there are bowls up here. Right now we've got all our Christmas decorations up, but usually there are bowls that um, I've made or my husband have made uh, because we met doing pottery actually. And uh, I did it for a few years. So although I have no mugs left, they've all broken. So I really enjoy getting other people's mugs. And um, so that was really lovely and it was a beautiful, beautiful evening before this freezing rain started. Um, went to Toronto last week. As I said, I didn't take a lot of footage in Toronto. I was, we were just busy doing stuff and it just didn't really materialize. Um, so yeah, and the house is slowly getting ready for Christmas. We don't have a tree yet. We've really been wondering whether we want to have a tree this year, which feels so slightly sacrilegious somehow <laughs> but um, I'm probably going to go out today and get a small tree but I've been enjoying you know just putting simple decorations here and there as we do every year and um, I'm probably not going to be doing as much baking as I usually do um, I think this year is going to be a slightly different year um, yeah, I'm just not feeling Christmas in the same way that I usually do and um, trying to kind of adapt to what it is that I'm in the mood for this year. So 
um, enjoying having some time off at Christmas, looking forward to it, and you'll definitely see me then. So yeah, until then, um, I wish you the best for this Advent season and the Christmas holidays if you are celebrating. And I'll be back, as I said, in, in that, what do they call it, Twixmas these days, the time between Christmas and New Year's. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, I'll have published um, my skirt pattern. And so I'll be sharing that with you and um, hopefully encouraging you to join me in a knit along for a skirt that you can make for yourself. And that's it for today, friends. See you next time. to see you, I suppose, and they're a gleaming, you must be dreaming, and the sun has said goodbye, with a twinkle in his eye, he's left the ocean, with sweet emotion. We go dancing in the rain, riding on a midnight train, away so slowly. And the moon is looking down on the sleepy side of town, and he's so lonely. Reach out and grab it